So now we're going to take a look at a middleware implementation example of blocking users by their IP address. Now what we're going to do is have this driven from the database. So we're going to bring a few things together. We're going to pluck out a list of IPs that we've blocked from the database and we're going to add global middleware which we haven't had a look at yet. So I'll be introducing that as well and we'll get this uh, pulled together. Now this is gonna be a really simple implementation. There are lots of packages that will allow you to uh, block based on IP addresses, some a lot more flexible than this. So feel free to browse around, have a look at the Slim documentation under the third party section and you'll find them. But let's do this just to kind of practice everything we've learned in this section. So I've reverted my roots just to have two roots here, just very, very simple closure based roots so we can have a little look at accessing these two if we have a blocked IP address. So the first thing to do then is actually create the middleware. Now you can go ahead and decide how you'd want to use this beforehand if you want, uh, but I tend to just go ahead and create the middleware and then start to use it. So let's say that this was called IP filter. I'm not really following the convention uh, that we saw earlier because this is more of a kind of general uh, middleware that deals with filtering IPs. So into this then, let's go ahead and set up our namespace. We know that this is app and middleware and the class here is obviously going to be called IP filter. Now we know that we have to have our invoke magic method. So Slim can call this middleware and then we can go ahead and grab the request if we need it, the response and the next callable middleware. So first thing, we return the next callable middleware passing in the current state of the request and the current state of the response and then we can do anything we need up here. And we're going to look at splitting this out so it's a little bit more tidy as well because really what you don't want to do is do everything inside of invoke. You can go ahead and split this out into methods now that you have class based uh, middleware makes it a lot easier and a lot cleaner. So what do we need to do? Well, we need to pull this from the database. So let's set this up. We'll do some querying in here and we'll tidy this up in a moment. So maybe we had a table in our database called blocked and inside of here we had an IP, which is a string. So let's go and add a couple of IP addresses in here. So let's create a new record. Uh, this is going to be an IP version six local host address. So I'm going to say uh, colon colon one. And maybe we could duplicate this down and say 127.0.0.1. But of course, this would be probably somewhere that you add IP addresses that you want to block. OK, so now that we have this, we know that we need our database uh, instance in here on our container so we can start to uh, make a query. Now, that's all we really need at this stage. But if you did need anything else, you can go ahead and pass that through. Maybe you wanted to manually pass a list of IP addresses into the constructor of this middleware entirely up to you. So let's go ahead and make sure that we accept in our database instance. We already have this on the container uh, from the rest of the series. So if we just come over to Bootstrap app to remind ourselves, we have this on our container and we're just returning a new PDO instance and we're using this slim database. Okay, so we know that into here, we want to accept in a PDO instance and I'm just gonna call that DB. And because we are within a namespace here, we need to go ahead and just use PDO at the top. We just set this as a dependency into here. So we set that as a property. Go ahead and set that in there. And we are pretty much set up within our middleware to use our database. So over in web then, what we could do, and the kind of idea here is we want to block the entire site. So every request to any route, we want to block if that IP is blocked. So how do we add this middleware? Well, of course, what we could do is go ahead and add it to each one. And we've already seen how this is uh, probably a bad idea. So we could go ahead and use that in there. And of course, at the top here somewhere, go ahead and use app middleware and IP filter. We could do that for every single route. You may just want to block certain routes based on the IP address. That's absolutely fine. Um, but obviously we know that this solution is a little bit messy. We're going to have to do this over and over again. So we really don't want to do that, particularly because we're going to be passing through our database into here as well. Now, of course, the other solution, which we've already looked at, is to create a root group. So you could create a group for your entire root set and go ahead and place all of your roots inside of here and then add your IP filter middleware on here. But there's a much easier way if you wanted to add global middleware to your application. And all we do is use app add because we know that we have that method uh, over on our, if we go under vendor 
slim, slim, and then under app again, we know that we have that add method, which also works for uh, roots as well, because when we call something like get, uh, this will return the current app instance for us. All we do is we say new IP filter, pass through what we need, and this will apply to everything that is requested within our application. So in our case, we know that we want to pass now container, our database, and that is all we need to do. So this will be run now for any route that we try and access, simple as that. So over to IP filter, let's go ahead and start to implement this and see what we get. First thing I'm gonna do is just come over, give this a refresh, make sure we didn't break anything and everything looks okay. So what do we want to do then? Well, into here, we need to get a list of IPs. So get all of the IPs that we've blocked. We want to check that the current IP is, is in this list. So check current IP is in the list. And then if so, we want to set some kind of status and maybe write to the body. You could redirect, but in the case of this, we're checking on every route. So in that case, you uh, wouldn't be able to redirect to a route to say you have been blocked. Uh, but either way, you kind of get the idea. So we want to, in this case, respond with a 401 and maybe write to the body like so. And we know that we can do that using response. Okay, so get IPs. Well, all we need to do is create a variable to go ahead and access our database. We need to query the database. And in this case, I'm gonna select just the IP column. We don't need that ID in there really, from blocked. And in this case, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to fetch all results, but I'm gonna do something slightly different. I'm gonna say PDO, and we are going to fetch this time by a column, and we're gonna choose column zero. So if you were to have say an ID and an IP, this would be one because it's the second one along. Or again, if you were doing select everything, this would be one as well. But in this case, we only are interested in grabbing the IP, so we grab that. So let's just do a var dump here on IPs and then just kill the page. Go ahead and give this a refresh and you can see we now have an array with two items. The first one is that IP version six address and then we have an IP version four address. So we know that we've got our IP addresses now all we really need to do is a little check. So check current IP is in list. In this case, we would probably use something like in array to pass through the current user's IP address. And there are uh, better ways to do this, but let's go ahead and say remote address, checking that it's in IPs. Well, if it is, we want to respond with a 401 and maybe write to the body. Now, in this case, what do we do? Do we go ahead and overwrite the response with what we want and then return the next callable? Well, we can do, but in this case, it's a lot easier to simply return the response like so with a status. So we know that we have all of these methods available and then maybe write to the body and say something like denied. So this will handle everything perfectly for us. So now that we've done this, this is going to work. We are gonna tidy this up in just a minute, uh, but let's go over and give this a refresh and we can see that on the home page we get a denied. On login, we get a denied. That's because, of course, I'm on my local machine and my IP address matches one of these in here. So if I just say, get rid of the IP version six address here, give it a refresh, I can access login and I can access the home page. Okay, so let's tidy this up a little bit because really for me, the whole point of creating class-based middleware is so I can create additional methods down here to tidy things up. And we explained that kind of thinking process when we created our controllers. If we needed to create some kind of protected or private method down here to reuse throughout here, then we can do very easily. In this case though, if this were any longer, I would think about starting to break it up. So let's go ahead and create a allowed method. That kind of makes sense. And into this, maybe we pass in an IP address. Well, in this case, I can move the query to here, and then I can simply return something like in array, or rather not in array, because we're kind of checking if it is allowed rather than denied. And then we just do the same thing. So we pass through our remote address. We pass through the IPs that we've plucked out of the database. And then all we need to do now is say something like, if not this allowed, passing in the user's IP address. So in this case, we would replace this out, of course, with the IP, pasting this in here, and we are done. So that's just kind of tidied things up a little bit. And if this got any more complicated, maybe you wanted to pass a range of IPs through to here and then kind of check these, then it would be a lot easier to do that as well. So let's get rid of this 
and come over, give it a refresh, it still works. Over here, it still works. But of course, if we go ahead and add this back in, so let's just duplicate this row and add that version six local IP, we get a denied and the same for login as well. So there we go. That's just a really simple example of everything we've pretty much covered, pulling together something that's practical, useful, that works into middleware. And we've also looked at the concept of globally adding middleware as well. In some cases, you may wish to do this, but in others, if you really just want to protect a set of routes, then you know how to create a root group and add middleware to that as well.